Okay, here it is, the Tesla P100D. Uh, it certainly doesn't muck around and gets gets up to speed pretty quick, obviously. But um, there's one thing about it that wasn't quite up to specs, and that would be the stereo. So here we go in the boot. This is what it comes as standard with the upgrade package. Okay, that's what the boot looks like, and uh, there's all this space down the bottom here, which is great for luggage and carrying stuff, but it was pretty much screaming out to put some subs in there. I mean, really, it's just made for it. So over on the left here is where I keep the 10 amp uh, emergency charge, just in case it's stuck somewhere. And over on the right is the subwoofer that comes with this um, upgraded package. Now, it's only a, an eight inch sub, there you see, made in Hungary, Hungary's finest. And uh, that's what it looks like out of the car. Now, this isn't mine, this is someone else's, but it's the same thing, just to give you an idea of the box that um, Tesla put together. So that had to go. So I'm going to keep the uh, box in there because it's all upholstered nicely and there's not much point um, ripping that out. Of course in the front there's some cabling to do. The factory amp is up in here on the right. You can't see it here but it's up there. So what had to be done was cables, there you see, from the output of that amp to go to the input of my amp that's going in the boot. And obviously cables going back from my amp back into where that original spot speed feeds the speakers. So a couple of cables there, and there's the high to low level converter, and of course a missing back seat. Now I wanted some lighting as well, and gone are the days of neons, everything's LEDs now, so it just comes in a roll like that, and I put some red LED lighting. The box is uh, quite a work of art, I think. I was pretty, pretty happy with how they did that, and as you can see it fits in there, because they made it to fit in there. Um, there's gonna be two amps in the middle, uh, with a, a sub each side as you can see we're just waiting on the other amp at that stage and there's going to be this mesh that gets pressed to fit over the top and make it look nice and pretty and there's the lighting as well to just give it a bit of a glow and as I said the original factory sub is there just to fill in the space uh, the new subs in the middle with the two amps and the emergency cable still lives down the side in the front, I went for a bit of that red lighting too, down the foot wells, just because I felt like it. And it looks good, it matches the red car. And underneath the main controls is the uh, sub control, just added in there. Now, we've purposely got it built so that the original cover can fit over there. As you can see, it sits lower than the, the level of the floor there. Um, that was done on purpose, so that this cover can fit over there, just like it always was, and I've still got most of the boot there, apart from the hole that's now filled with subs. So that fits nicely. Right in the front here, we've got a tweeter on the side and a, a mid-driver at the front. Now, Tesla class them as two different speakers, but really, they're, they're together as one. So we'll call that one side of the, the front pair. Okay, so there's another one over the right-hand side here, obviously two speakers each side, but really that's the first pair. Now there was a center speaker in the middle, but um, I got it disconnected because it was it was pretty pointless really, and I didn't want it there. So next pair along is the front door speakers. Um, there they are. And the third pair is the back door. Now that's the same as the front really, as far as position goes. And the fourth pair is in the back um, of oh, the lid here. And now I have two extra subs. So that's the total amount of speakers. None of the speakers in the doors and the dashboard would change. They're all factory. I'm just feeding them from a better amp. And the amp has a USB input so that I can connect a computer to it to do all the, uh, the fine tuning because it has its own uh, DSP unit in it. And um, I can connect it up to the laptop and Play around with it and get it sounding good. Oh, this is just an adapter for the MacBook to fit the USB in. Now in the front, obviously I'll just plug that into the laptop and uh, start up the program that came with the amplifier, I downloaded from their site, that lets you adjust uh, the parametric equalizer for four pairs. So this this amplifier is an um, eight channel amp, and as I went through the speakers, I've got four pairs, so that's how the amp's set out, and I can adjust each of them individually. 
through the, this program. This interface is actually just a prolific driver, so it's, it's the USB to serial comms. That's all it really is, the serial interface to the amp. Okay, so it's found the, um, the DSP, which means it's connected to the amp. And um, so I can copy data to it or from it. So what I'm going to do first is copy data from that to here. Now, if I was playing music now, it would actually cut out while I was doing this, but I wasn't playing anything, so I can't show you that. Oh, and that's another thing to mention. I've got four different presets of, of setups that I, can, that I can run. So I'm, at the moment, I'm just grabbing what they did in the install place and bringing them to this laptop, and then, then we can take it from there. Okay, so now I'll look at um, preset one and look at the uh, equalizer. And that's what the guys did at the install. So basically they've just added a bit up the top here. Um, so that's for, for that. Now, if I was playing music, I'll just play something. What I can do is shut off different speakers. And I'll turn the sub off just because uh, I'm not playing with that one. Yet. So what I'll do is um, channel one, front left up the top, channel two, front left, right, three is the door. Sounds a bit horrible at the moment. Um, channel four, that's the back left door. Channel six, back right door. That sounds horrible. Channel seven is the back at the top there that I showed before, and channel eight is obviously the right hand side. So just going with the front two. What have I got? You can't hear this obviously very well through the camcorder that. It's very trebly up the front. Very trebly. The doors pretty flat. I think the doors are trying to do a bit more bass than I think they can handle, so I'll adjust that. The back doors aren't too bad. And the little things on the back, that's equivalent to that in, in sound. So what I'll do is, um, I'll just use one speaker at the moment. And, um, I can play around with them. Now, doing that by ear, I can get it sounding good, but I won't know if it's actually flat, all I can do is tell if it's not right. Like at the moment I can tell it just doesn't sound right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, get a noise generator and put a microphone up and and look to see what should sound right. And then just verify if it does sound right with my own ears. So I'll do that now. Now the next little toy I've got here is um, just a sound card essentially, a uh, USB one, but it's good because it's got balanced inputs and um, phantom power to power up a microphone. Because um, I'm going to use one of my studio mics, because it's probably the best mic that I've got, to um, see what it hears from this. So, let's get that going as well. Plug the microphone in with balanced XLR plugs. It's even got phantom power, 48 volts. So, um, got the mic happening now. And I'll put that up the top of the headrest in the driver's seat. Even though, it, ideally, I should be sitting there to tune this because you know your body affects it, but I'm not going to fit my knees and laptop near the steering wheel, so I'm going to sit here. All right, now we've got the um, analyzer set up and um, feeding it the sound. There it is. And um, I'll play some pink noise just to show you sort of what I'm getting at here. Turn that off a bit. This is with all the speakers on. So if I stick it up here, the tweeters, you see the high ends come up. Take it away, it goes wherever. Down, down there, there wasn't any high end. So, you know, and up there, where I'm going to be, I'm going to set it up as best I can to, to look as good as it can up there. All right, I'm in here now with all the windows shut and going to see what I can do.
This is going to take a while, so I'll show you it once I've finished. Hopefully I'll get a good result. Okay, now, at the moment I'm doing the front left speaker. Um, I've turned the sub down as low as it can be, but the, the sub's on in the boot rumbling away, but it shouldn't matter too much. Um, I'll stop talking in a second just to give you an idea what happens when I've got a, a crossover on. So I'm going to make these high pass filters so you know these speakers aren't going to try and do too much bass and you'll see a difference in the spectral display. I don't know if you heard that, but um, you see now it's 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 taken a, a lot of that bass off. If I stop talking, so look at the bottom left area of that spectrum display when I go back to flat. It comes up. And if we go down now. Okay, so that's the high pass crossover. Um, that's the first step I'll do. The next step will be this parametric equalizer where it's gonna take some time. I don't know how much time I'll actually spend on it, but I'll have a look through and see if I can get the best sound. Well, first I'll look for the best response on this, on the spectral display, and then I'll put some real music on and, and have a listen and see how it sounds. Another reason I'm doing all this is because, as standard, there's just way too much sound screaming at you from the, the dashboard here, okay? It, it was just horrible and there wasn't really a cabin fill. So what I'm trying to do as well here that you won't hear, but what I'm doing is I'm bringing the sound more into the center part of the, the car here, so it just like is an ambient sound rather than just screaming in your face at the front here. One thing I discovered when I was doing the setup of this is these front speakers in the door here have a low pass filter, so there was no treble going to these. Uh, that's from the factory amp, so I guess their logic was feed all the treble up here and just bass down there. Now I wanted to reduce some of the bass on this, and that's how I discovered it, because when I took the bass out there was nothing left. Okay, because the, the treble's already gone. So what I did, and what I can do with that amp is, the channel that feeds it, I can make that a proportion of this one, that one, and the other two, whatever. So what I did, I fed it the same input as it goes to these speakers because that was full range and now I can set a high pass filter on this just to get rid of some of that bass so it's not trying to do bass that it really struggles with now that I've got the subs doing the bass if I take the bass off here I can just give them a bit more power and you know, get it louder so there it is the upgraded uh, stereo in the Tesla